we're live. We're live. Here we are coming from the couch today. Woo! We are on the couch today. We thought that would be a nice change of scenery. And actually, it's because we can't get him off the couch. Hmm? No, you're, that joke fell flat. <laughs> anyway. So, um, I got wow. another pair of shoes. Oh my God. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. So, uh, Look at those ugly things. the, uh, the new Fronings pair number 32, 33, I think, um, my review after one day, phenomenal, phenomenal. Go get yourself some Nano 11 Fronings. Or maybe you should just give away one yeah. of your extra pairs. No. That's not what we do. Anyway, um, fantastic, fantastic shoe. Thank you, Rich, for designing yet another shoe. Um, anyway, CrossFit Games were this weekend. Who watched it? Watched some, I did not. Right? You watched all of it. You know it. I missed one of them. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal CrossFit Games. Um, despite the lack of Reebok being the title sponsor, I think Noble pulled it all off, even though nobody was wearing any of their shoes. Um, on the men's side, you know, the women's were wearing some Nobles, but I, I didn't see a lot of Nobles on the men's side or the teams. Well, the champ wore them. The champ did wear them because they paid him. And Tia, Tia saved Reebok $90,000 in one weekend because wow. they didn't have to pay her. To win events, nine out of anyway. Because they were going to pay the winner ten thousand for an event like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So congratulations to Justin Medeiros and again Annie and everybody else Annie? that not Annie. Yes, and Annie and Tia. And Laura. I don't know. I got Annie on my mind because we're going to talk about her Laura. in a in a second. Um, but we wanted to kind of recap some of the really cool things that we learned about being human or whatever. Yeah, I'm bad today. Yeah, so much was learned by watching the CrossFit Games. So. What's yours? Oh, God. I'm bad. Well, I got a couple. You got a couple. All I right, so won, I really okay, appreciated everybody. watching yeah. <laughs> what did mental you learn? resiliency and more than one way. Obviously, we all know what it's like when you're really fatigued and tired and you keep pushing through on a workout. Um, and obviously they're the best at doing that as they have what four events a day for four days, something insane like that. Um, so, and with that resiliency comes consistency and someone who kind of flew under the radar who didn't get much coverage is Laura Hor Horvat? Hor Horvat? Horvat. I heard Horvat. it said both ways. Yeah. Cause she got Horvat, second. Horvat. She mm -hmm. got second and she didn't necessarily have like, she, I think she had a few event wins or one, but not it's like I don't think she won any events. Yeah, she didn't. Yeah, so she, but she got so consistent and did so good at everything. She got second, um, so that takes some resiliency. And then also, I really appreciated the character and attitude and mental resiliency of the athletes who couldn't compete. There were a lot of athletes, especially on the female side, that got put out because of COVID or because of injuries. Um, but when I saw them post about it or speak about it. Um, pretty much all of them, especially Bethany Shadburn and Carrie Pierce said, you know what? The cards didn't play on our favor this year. It sucks to work all year for this, but we're going to come back even stronger next year. And they just put their head down and were able to accept the fact they couldn't control the situation and already be preparing themselves for the next year in an instant. Like that takes mental resiliency to lose your whole goal for the whole year and be able to already put your head down and look at the next year. So... Laura and them, and then of course Annie Thora's daughter. You want to touch on her? Oh my gosh, the Annie God. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, there was there was some conversation after the games, and I asked some of the people in the four o'clock class who cried after this, hmm. and um, Robert Barger um, he cried three times, and one of the moments was when Annie won third uh, place in third place, and it. It was pretty amazing. So if you do not know who, who Annie Thor's daughter is, You're gonna you, learn today. you probably have not been around CrossFit ever. Um, she started in 2009 and uh, got her first muscle up at the 2009 games at the ranch and then has won twice 
and is back, had a baby less than a year ago, had some severe uh, depression after the baby, some healing that goes on, all that stuff. Yeah. She had one horrendous year and at the same time had one of the best years of her life. And just watching her compete, knowing the hardships that she went through all year and not feeling confident that she could compete at that level goes and takes third place. Um, and, and watching her hit that, what was that? That 200, 200 pounds, snatch, 200 pounds sure. snatch and she catches it in the bottom and just goes, she didn't even realize. She did I just that. snatch 200 pounds? Like it, it was just an amazing number of moments for her and having her take third place just shows you there really is not a whole lot that we can't do as humans. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that can get in our way is ourselves, right? Our excuses are the stories that we tell ourselves why we can't do something. I mean, look yeah. at the dude that, that deadlifted 502 yeah. pounds with Speaking one arm. No excuses. Like one of my things that I was going to talk about is the adaptive division. Mm -hmm. There are no Amazing. excuses now. You cannot bring up anything like, oh, like, I'm not having a good day or anything. You don't have a bad day. No. <laughs> you don't have a bad day. There's someone that yeah. doesn't have an arm that it can deadlift 502. That and is insane. I can't deadlift 502. You have all your limbs. And I have two arms. That's in. That's it's just, what? That, I can't, I have no words for that, really. Yeah. That like, same guy did the single arm rope yeah. climbs. Yeah, or actually there was another person that was doing rope climbs and he had this part of his arm just right here, right here. He's doing one arm rope climbs. Okay? It's crazy. The only like, the only thing that was keeping him, him upright was him leaning up against the rope with his chest right here and then grabbing up again and going back up. Like, that is insane. I, I've tried that before and I cannot do that. Like, you have no excuse now to learn new things. Like, it is insane. Yeah, it just, that whole division. So bravo to CrossFit for yeah. bringing those adaptive athletes nice fucking to job. center nice stage. Job. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And one of the things that, as a gym owner, I really wanted to, to touch on and I understand why it happened, but we all know and love Brooke Wells, and there's a lot of Brooke Wells fans out there, and she has suffered a pretty serious injury during that one rep snatch. Um, but this wasn't a one-off type of injury. She obviously had that elbow wrapped up. Whether she talked about it or not, she knew there was something going on in that elbow. Now, would any of us who are going to the CrossFit Games made any other decision? No. Absolutely not. You go compete, and if your elbow falls off your arm, that's what you're going to do. You're going to, as Justin says, die for points, yeah. right? So we get that. But us here in the normal world, like if you have a problem with your elbow or your knee or whatever, stop hammering on it, right? Please. Listen to your body. Tell your coaches. Mm -hmm. Tell us, please. We'll figure out a way where it can keep you moving, keep you working out. We can work around pretty much wow. any injury, but you need to listen to your yeah. body and let that injury heal or you're going to um, drop 190 shout pounds out on your to head. Actually, Evan, I came to the uh, six o'clock yesterday. He said his back wasn't feeling too well last week. Um, and he couldn't do power cleans. So I said, okay, let's sub this. Let's do something else that doesn't nag your lower back. He had some outside injuries. I forgot where you got injured from but wasn't here wasn't, wasn't here <laughs> thank goodness yeah so we just subbed the power cleans for something else okay. it might have been a completely different movement but he still got the same stimulus okay. evan got a great workout yesterday. I, yeah i subbed power cleans for a soul <laughs> bike oh <well. laughs> echo bike echo bike echo bike okay, yeah, yeah echo bike just it was still three reps or three calories that's it but it was a lightweight for the uh, power clean, so he can get it done real quick. I knew he can get the three power cleans done real quick. I know he can get three calories done real quick. Okay? Everything is scalable. So if you feel like you're nagging in some ways, like tell us. We have substitutes. Or on the opposite end, don't keep no. hammering on mm -hmm. an injury. Yeah. There's, it's really, for the most part, not worth it. Um, unless you're going to the games. 
Yeah, you go and for then, the games. Yeah, but we don't have any of those people here. Well, and even then, Kara Saunders said she could tell just trying to compete while recovering from COVID. She's like, my body was just breaking down, and I would have put her back in her competitiveness in the future if she just kept competing throughout the game. So, yeah. So. Yeah. So, we would like to know what you guys thought of the CrossFit Games, what you learned. Are there any life lessons you got out of watching those phenomenal athletes? They're freaks. They're Comment just, down yeah. below. Put your comments down below here. We want to hear your stories. And, um, yeah, I was excited. Probably one of the best CrossFit games ever. So, Armin, stick it. He's too mad. I'm just, you know, I don't, I don't get it. He's got to complain about everything. We're positive people.